Hi, my name is Phil, I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the latest polling with a, a quick look at the, the two main parties of Labour and the Conservatives, how they're stacking up against each other towards the end of the video. But mostly to take a look at an apparent anomaly regarding polling for Reform UK compared to actual election results. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So Reform UK, which is what used to be the Brexit party before they renamed, is polling strongly with quite a few pollsters right now, including YouGov, which is one of the two pollsters I rate based on their accuracy in recent elections. Also helps that they're very open about their methodology and it is one that makes a lot of sense to people with a decent level of education in statistics. But there's an oddity. Although YouGov got the share of the vote for the larger parties or the more established parties bang on at the last election, as well as the one before, their polls did seem to overestimate the number of votes that the Brexit party would get back in 2019. Now, I discussed this recently and I did wonder if there was an issue with getting more support in polling than was possible in the election because the Brexit party in 2019 polled all their candidates from Tory seats at the time. Now, it is possible for a pollster to account for this by not giving someone the choice if they live at a postcode with no Brexit party candidate. But I don't know whether or not they did that. Either way, where the Brexit party were concerned, there was, there was a significant difference between the polling support and the actual voting support. And now we're seeing something similar, although we've got less data to be sure of anything. The latest YouGov poll for voting intention was out today. It has Reform UK now on 9% of the vote, up from 8% the previous week. Now, this seems like a hefty share of the vote for a fringe party that technically didn't exist at the last election. It sort of did. It was the Brexit party, but the, the current one technically didn't. And you can see that the polling surge came as the Tories tried to ramp up their immigration and asylum rhetoric. Now, I've said before, this is a policy that could bite them on the arse. Normally, it's a common enough Tory tactic stoke outrage so that the people who personally suffer very badly from Tory policies will still vote Conservative because you've got them focused on something that, that doesn't affect them at all. You know, create outrage, then you claim to be the only party that will deal with the source of this outrage. But Reform UK present a problem because they also stoke the xenophobic outrage. They also claim they've got solutions for it, but they are not the party of government. So they are able to point out that the Tories, all right, voting for them. You know, they may be just as outraged, but they're not exactly doing anything to deal with the problem, are they? So the Tories are effectively firing up groups of voters, but then making them easy targets for a switch to Reform UK. But is it really the case that Reform UK would get like 9% of the vote in a general election? Reform UK's recent surge only coincided with a small drop in support for the Conservatives. Then there are the by-elections. So we're fortunate right now in that we've had two by-elections this month in order to compare polling, voting intention polling, with actual results. They're not huge Brexit areas. One of them technically did vote leave and the other one didn't. Um, both of them were previously comfortable Labour wins as well. So it's not as ideal a barometer as, say, by-elections in significantly leave vote in marginal constituencies. But by-elections nonetheless. And, and the by-election this week was in Stretford and Urmston, and it was won very comfortably by Labour. As expected, they always win it comfortably. And Reform UK won 3.5% of the vote this week. Now, compare this to the Brexit party, which is the same basic party, in 2019. They also got 3.5% of the vote in the general election. So in this area at least, and despite having a candidate, Reform UK only got the same share of the vote as they did in 2019. And there was a similar story in the Chester by-election a couple of weeks ago. Reform UK got 2.7% of the vote then which was not much different to the 2.5% of the vote they got in the general election of 2019. And just before the 2019 general election, the Brexit party was polling on about 3% in the event they got nearer 2% of the vote, hence what I mean about the, the inflation in their support in the poll. But in these two seats, 
the Brexit party did better than the national average show the vote. Now, again, I will throw that caution in there. Because the Brexit party were not standing candidates in Tory seats, that would skew it a little bit. But the point is, they did get better than the average in these two constituencies. It doesn't seem likely that that support would suddenly have plummeted far below the national average now. And they also got a very similar level of support in the by-elections this month as they did the actual general election in 2019. You know, and in that, by, in that um, by-election, they got 2.7% in one and 3.5% in another. Now, that is way below the 8 or 9% that voting intention polls say that they would get. Basically, although there is good reason to be confident in the polling for the main parties, because the polling has consistently got been very, very close, almost dead on to the actual results when they're tested. There is clearly something funny going on with the new fringe party run by Richard Tice. Either people are claiming that they'd vote Reform UK, but they're not bringing themselves to actually do so in a real election. Or the polling system has a bit of a weakness and is somehow giving too much weight, inadvertently, to people who would vote Reform UK. Because we're just not seeing any justification for this surge in the polls when we look at actual by-election results. Obviously, every time there's a by-election, we can, we can go back to it and compare it with the, uh, the polling at the time and have a look, but it does seem odd. And the takeaway from this, I would say, is you know, be sceptical of the polling results for Reform UK. I mean, be sceptical of all polling results, but at the same time, where they match reality, you can be reasonably confident. Um, you know, and, and but the impact is real here, even if it is a, a, a falsely inflated support for Reform UK, because it allows the party to claim, because what they're doing, they're claiming, oh, we'd be the third largest party if there were to be an election tomorrow. It's not actually true, because we don't have proportional representation. But in terms of share of the vote, they can claim that. If Conservatives are looking at these polls and they're not critically evaluating them in terms of actual results, it could encourage them to adopt policies designed to head off the threat. And this is, of course, exactly what Reform UK, just like the Brexit party before it, exists to do. The party doesn't exist to win power. They talk about, oh, you know, you voters into power will be a great government. Nobody's pumping money into it for that pie in the sky notion. They probably won't win a single seat. The party exists and is funded 100% in order to present a threat to the Tories' right flank. It's there to keep them focusing on very right-wing policies and to stop them drifting back to the centre. Problem is, the Tories got away with it uh, in 2019 because Labour presented no threat to that centre. Now it's different, very different. The latest results have Labour maintaining a 48% share of the vote with the Conservatives dipping down a little, giving Labour a 25-point lead on YouGov. Now, in terms of best Prime Minister, Starmer's gained a few points this week. Sunak has maintained his previous rating, which means that Starmer now has an eight-point lead over Sunak. Another poll, a different one, Redfield and Wilton, they, did, they do a usual thing of um, asking people which party is, is most trusted on various policy areas. And Labour beat the Conservatives on all but one, and that one is action on Ukraine which is a matter that will hopefully not even need to be a policy at all for 2024, because hopefully it'll all be done with and, and Ukraine will have uh, gained control of its territories again. So on all the areas of public interest that will be issues at the next election, Labour are currently considered more trusted to handle them on quite a few of them by a lot. And this is as we get ready for winter. Remember that this is still the calm before the storm. Some Tory MPs have already broken ranks over the strikes, suggesting that the government will at least have to do more for nurses. We know that the government's main strategy for energy this winter was hoping that the weather would be mild. It's bloody freezing, I have to tell you. Granted, the preparation for energy needs this winter was down to Boris Johnson rather than Rishi Sunak. By the time he became Prime Minister, it was all a bit late. But it is the same party in government. You know, in less than half a year, Sunak will be fighting a round of local elections where Labour would be expected to make large gains under any circumstances because they suffered very bad results the last time these particular seats were contested. You know, the question for Sunak and his Tories is, what are they going to do about Reform UK polling, which seems to be inflated? I'm quite sure they've got perfectly good analysts who will point out that, you know, this is probably inflated. If they fail to recognise the inflated nature of the support or they want to like err on the side of caution, 
then they risk pursuing policies which aren't appreciated by key target voters, the ones they need to attract, leaving the way clear for Labour to, to gain them and win a decent majority at the election. But if they dismiss the threat, if they go, look, oh, it's clearly inflated, then they risk Reform UK building up more genuine support. Because if the Tories move away from those sorts of policies and try and drift back to the centre, you know, and, and if they just cover the policy areas that the, the Tories need to do to win more votes, then Reform UK are left to nick those votes on the far right. And maybe that'll be just enough Tory votes to cause a big problem in marginals, still handing Labour a decent majority. Like in theory, and I don't have enough information to know, but in theory, it could well be that whatever the Tories do regarding the threat of Reform UK, it costs them crucial votes no matter what. It's just a case of do you lose your votes to Reform UK or do you lose them to Labour? But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.